Hey, it's Jack here. Today we're in Carson City, Nevada, visiting the Nevada State Railroad Museum. Inside this museum is the infamous Wanderer Engine Number no. 8 from Wild Wild West. I understand it's in here with the other two cars from the show from the 1960s. Let's go inside and check it out. We're inside the Trading Museum. The cars beside me were used in plenty of movies. These cars were both used in filming of the Wild Wild West. The car exteriors were used in the films, whereas the interiors of the cars were on a CBS sound studio for a Wild Wild West TV show. This was the lab car, the car that held the horses for Jim, and Ar Jim West and Artemis Gordon. And as I said, inside, it's been fully restored to what it would have been done, used in its heyday. And the interiors of the cars for the TV show were done on the soundstage. And this is what it would have been like to travel by rail back in the day in the 1870s, 1880s. These were plush cars back then, and we've got our conductor buddy right here just waiting to take your ticket. The engine used in TV show Wild Wild West in the TV show, it was number eight, so they could invert the film back and forth, and the train could be coming from the left of the screen or right of the screen with one shot just by inverting the film. But the actual train number is number 20, or engine number is number 22, and again, it's owned by the Virginia Trekkie Railroad. And the actual engine name is not the Wanderer as it was in the TV show, it's called the Inyo. The original engine used in the pilot of the TV show was built in 1880, when the TV show pilot took off, they actually used a time period engine built in the 1870s to fit the time period of the TV show for the Wild Wild West. The engine has been restored to its original state as what it was. For the filming of Wild Wild West, it was actually oil burning. It had been converted to oil. It's been converted back to wood burning now. Originally it was wood burning when it was built in the 1870s and they left no attention to detail spared. It's uh, definitely detailed and looking good. Uh, the engine number 22 was used in the movie Union Pacific amongst countless other TV shows and movies of the time. As all well as what we know is uh, it was used in the Wild Wild West. The other engine they have on exhibit here is the Dayton. Both of these engines were used in the centennial celebration of the Transcontinental Railroad. If you go up to Promontory Summit in Utah now, they have two engines that were specifically built for exhibit there and for demonstrations of the centennial they used. The only engines they had were these engines. So the Dayton was used, as well as the Inyo. This guy's uh, hanging out, keeping watch. This car here was uh, used in the movie Union Pacific and destroyed during the filming, but it's been restored to its original state. Here's how it looked after the filming of the Union Pacific movie. On the floor, they have this map of the Transcontinental Railroad. This is probably one of the bigger maps I've seen of the Transcontinental Railroad and fairly detailed. It talks about how much track was laid per day going from east to west and west to east. And it's to scale of one foot equals 20 miles. The Central Pacific and Union Pacific, as we know, arrived at Promontory Summit. Last spike was driven on May 10th, 1869. Another exhibit they have here at the museum is artifacts of communication. It took a lot of people to run a railroad. And we look at the technology back in the day, signal flags, whistles, lights, bells. We had the telegraph, the telephone later on, and then the typewriter. Another exhibit they have is how does a steam engine work? They've take a cutout copy of the engine for the number 22 Enyo, also known as the number eight engine Wanderer from the show Wild Wild West, and they show you how the water gets burned, made into steam to drive a piston that drives the wheels that puts the train down the rail. 
This is a car that's being restored. At one side of this removed to show the construction of what a car looked like back in the day. On the side of the real car, all these holes. Those aren't bullet holes. Those were done by a woodpecker. This exhibit shows the number of railroad lines that have been in Nevada over the years. Over the years, there have been a total of 54 railroad lines. One that caught my attention was that one right there, number 52. It's an interesting name. And the 52 railroad, right up there in the mountains, outside of Beatty, north of Armagosa Valley. Outside the museum is this Western Pacific caboose. Walk up here and look inside, see if the door is unlocked. Oh, it's definitely locked. We can look inside and see the caboose. Outside the main building is this graveyard of sorts of rail cars coming here for restoration or just they're going to use the parts for other things. This self-propelled Virginian Trekkie, another number 22 but not related to the engine we just saw, self-propelled car. It definitely has that steampunk look to it. Pretty darn cool. To be exact, this is called a McKean motor car, number 22. Love the machine smell. You can smell that Caterpillar engine. Yeah, this definitely has that steampunk look with the portholes that will go up to the ceiling. In the back, got more of the same portholes that can be affixed to the ceiling of the car. This just looks like a fun place to sit down and take a ride. Seats are fairly comfortable. Spinch seat is. Fully restored. The woodwork, pinstriping, brass work. This is really cool. Designed and built by the McKean Motor Car Company, Omaha, Nebraska. This is what they consider their annex building. It's also their shop where they repair the cars and the engines. A lot of the original equipment, machines, and tools that they use to repair and build the engines are on display here. It was explained to me by a curator that the machines we're looking at now are no longer used, but they, if they dusted them off and uh, got them PM'd and everything, they'd be ready to go. It was an original wheel lathe had two blades on it, one on the left side over here and one on the right side, and that would cut your wheels. Here's a car that was a Edwards Rail Car, number 401 from the Tucson, Cornelia, and Gila Bend Railroad. This was a self-propelled car that would take passengers between those towns in Arizona. And this is what it looks like inside this self-propelled car. Although they're not in operation today, this hand car does work and does go around the track here they have at the museum. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tour walking around the Nevada State Railroad Museum in Carson City. If you're in the area, check it out. The price of admission is $8. And there's a lot to see and do. The money goes to a good cause restoring the railroad cars and the engines that we saw. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and we'll catch you on the next one.